men that are able to control and master sexual energy. They're more focused men and focused men are successful men. I'm Dominique DeVita, I'm a registered nurse, master intimacy coach, and I help men tap into their sexual energy to unlock a level of creativity that makes their love life and their businesses take off. I'm going to share with you how to be an unforgettable lover that women crave. The three tenets of Tantra are breath, sound, and movement. White Tantra practice is to meditate. The reason that meditation helps you so much is your brain is your largest sex organ. When we're overthinking, we're underfeeling. The longer a woman can be in a meditative state, the easier it is for them to orgasm. The longer a man can be in a meditative state, the longer he will last in bed. Tantra helps you use your five senses and drop down and connect into your body. So breathing, taking nice, long, so deep breaths. One, it helps to regulate and calm your nervous system, which makes you desirable. Women, the, if we can breathe deeply during sex and have long, slow, deep breaths, we'll be more orgasmic. Men, you'll be able to last longer as well if you're breathing deep, deep down into your belly and taking nice, long, slow, deep breathing and encouraging your lover, whisper in her ear and have her continue to breathe. Because a lot of times women, we unconsciously will hold our breath for a moment when the pleasure starts to build up and then our orgasm will disappear. That has happened. I mean, breathing deeply will support orgasms for women. Sound is like a thief and it steals attention from your body. For women, when we have a lot of tension in our bodies, it'll be more challenging for us to orgasm. Men, when you hold more tension in your body, you orgasm too quickly. You won't last as long as you want. And then movement, moving and dance and other practices Dancing is great because when you're dancing, you are breathing more deeply. You are listening to sound. You could be singing along and you're moving your body. A lot of times we are so still or have these stuck energies within us. And knowing how to move our sexual energy, our life force energy through us is really powerful. Tantra is ancient wisdom from over 5,000 years ago. It wasn't even about having better sex. The byproduct of Tantra is that you have better sex. Because if you can be dropped in and be more present with your lover... And you're able to calm the monkey mind from distracting you. And you can really tune into your partner. And you're not thinking about all the stressors of the world. You can really have intimacy and connection. That is going to be something that a woman desires and really craves. It's so rare to be found. I was Miss Wild. I've had a lot of lovers. And on Halloween, I'll be 55 years young. And I know I've had at least a hundred lovers. I'm sure of it. I never even had sex with alcohol because I don't drink alcohol. This is all sober choices, okay? (laughs) And with that, only two lovers that I had really knew how to have this type of sex with me. I don't desire having regular sex. Do you want something gourmet or an amazing meal served to you so deliciously by the best chef? And all these courses and you just like, oh my gosh, all your sensors are being immersed in this experience with the food and just everything, the ambiance, everything is so great. Do you want to have that? Or do you want to have an experience where you're going through a fast food drive through and it's just a quickie? So a lot of women, there's an orgasm gap and sometimes we're just starting to get turned on. And then men, the way our arousal cycles are different, men will already be finished. So we're missing each other and there's so much more that we can share, but you're just not being educated on that. I'm here to really support you with that. I have a client in his 60s who wasn't able to make love to his wife. Even Viagra was failing him. It was not working. After a few weeks of coaching, their sex life began improving. And then six months later, he was having better sex with his wife in their 60s than when they were in their 30s. They were married for 30 years. I get thank you texts from them all the time. He shared with me, he goes, I feel more power in my penis I wish I knew about this 15 years ago. Now they're having lovemaking sessions for hours. Even before starting the day, he had an hour-long session with her. He was like, she had six to eight orgasms before they went to work. He was ready to go again the next day. He started having morning wood again. If you're not having morning wood, that's an indicator of your cardiovascular health. Whenever I work with clients, I also help them balance their gut microbiome, work with their health because your body's an instrument for you to experience pleasure. You can spend a lot of money on pills and creams, but they can have side effects and something will still be missing because you're not fully present and dropped in. You don't know how to have intimacy or connection. When I did my trauma-informed program, over 95% of adults received inadequate parenting. So we did not get examples of healthy relationships in the home and how to feel safe. Men are taught to disconnect from their emotions. Big boys don't cry. Women desire for you to be able to share your emotions with us, but that can be so challenging for men. 
and for women too, because you disconnected for so long and oh, now I'm in a relationship and this person has really wanted me to open up and I feel so awkward. But women crave more than just mechanics of sex. We're very intuitive. We can tell when you're just masturbating inside of our bodies or you're checked out or thinking of a fantasy and wonder why we're not really wanting to be with you. But we sense that something is off because we desire intimacy, that connection, that presence. The guy was able to last a long time for me to have multiple orgasms, but he wasn't fully present. So that's key. And a meditation practice is great. I recommend using the Headspace app. I always thought I was never going to be able to meditate. My brain felt like I had a thousand computer tabs open. I was like, there's just no way I can do this. They have lessons and tips on how to meditate. That's what helped me. That's a game changer. That helped me in the world. That would help me before I go to work as a nurse. My shifts were better. Everything's starting to be better. How to be an irresistible lover. I did have a client that already mastered non-ejaculatory orgasms before we started working together. He was a top executive in a Fortune 500 company, but he needed help regulating his nervous system. All the stress of working so hard, took a toll on his body and his nervous system. He developed an irregular heart rhythm, atrial fibrillation. So as we began working together, I guided him on masculine energy dynamics. He was frustrated. His wife would nag him a lot. Oh my gosh, she won't stop nagging me. But if you're not embodying your masculine energy in a healthy masculine, because we can be an unhealthy masculine or healthy masculine or unhealthy feminine or healthy feminine energy dynamic. But if you're not embodying that healthy, masculine energy. A woman is not going to feel safe to trust you to do things and they're going to nag you. I was like, your wife is just as tired of this as you are. He didn't feel comfortable with his masculine energy because he saw toxic masculinity modeled by other people in the world. He had not seen a healthy masculine model to him. He wasn't comfortable with that. So I helped him with that. Then I helped him with techniques to lower his stress and his anxiety and to start to regulate his nervous system. When we start dating someone, we're like, oh, they're sexy, or I'm a leg man, or their sign is this, or they have a lot of money, fancy car, like whatever the trappings of success or the visual things, or I love their eyes or sexy lips, whatever those traits are, they're like, oh, that's what drew me to them. And we think we're in relationship with them. We're actually in relationship with our partner's nervous systems, and we don't realize this. And this was so mind-blowing for me as well. It's really important that we know how to calm our own nervous systems. And also know how to co-regulate nervous systems with our lovers, with our partners, so that when stressful times and in challenging times, things don't escalate and we can face challenges together and find solutions. Because when our nervous system is dysregulated, we go into Frankenstein brain and we can't problem solve. We're very reactive and we can't think logically. With nervous system regulation practices, you're able to slow things down and regulate your nervous system. And Einstein brain gets turned on and you can have clarity and solve problems. So that's why top executives or top CEOs, they will be trained on nervous system regulation work because in businesses, challenges, you'll be able to respond to the challenges instead of being reactive to it. As I started guiding him and he started calming his nervous system, his wife started desiring him. He was telling me, I just can't believe this. He was like, I had no idea that my stress and me being a bundle of nerves all the time was impacting my wife desiring me. Now they're having better sex. I said, how long has it been since your sex life has been like this with your wife? He said, decades. I guided him on some other things like healing his gut microbiome. And I made some recommendations to his functional cardiologist and his atrial fibrillation is gone and he and his marriage are thriving. Why is this important for me to share this with you? When you master your energy, your sexual energy, and you regulate your nervous system, you become this really safe space for your lover and they're able to relax. This is not just going to impact your love life. It's going to impact your business or how you show up in your workplace. All of your relationships will begin to thrive because you can start to respond to life instead of reacting to life. Your ability to respond is your responsibility. I'll say that again. Your ability to respond is your responsibility. I'm going to dive deeper into some tips. Our relationships are deeply intertwined with the nervous system of others. And by mastering the regulation of our own nervous systems, we create that safety with our lover and other connections and get that clarity. Not having these skills can cost us a lot in business and in love. On do's and don'ts for being a better lover, one of the things is to... Be sure that you create a sense of safety. 
going on a first date, they did a study that's like, what do men and women fear on a first date? For men, the biggest fear men would have on a first date was that they didn't want to be laughed at. That was their biggest fear. For women, their number one fear on the first date was they didn't want to get killed. My friends and I, we will share our locations now that we have that technology on our phones when we're going on a date with a new person and let that person know. Do you have to do that whenever you go out on a date with a woman and let people know where you are, your location, what your plans are? Share this person's social media accounts. You're not having to do that. But women, we have to worry about our safety. And so with safety, you can be with someone for a long time, but how do you create safety even when you're driving in the car? Are you driving wild and reckless and it's making the woman feel unsafe? Because the movement of the car feels when you're in the response to the car feels when you're in the driver's seat versus sitting in the passenger seat is very different. So that person, if they're not feeling safe, their nervous system starts to dysregulate and they're not going to be able to relax. For women, I'm going to go into the polarity as well. Our hearts need to open for us to be more open sexually. I want you to think of a battery and not to say one is positive or negative, but think of one end is the positive charge and the negative charge. We're going to go into masculine and feminine energy. Men, you're a balance more even than women of masculine and feminine energetics because you have the XY chromosome. Women were the XX chromosome, but men, you're more of a balance of masculine and feminine. But because our world and the patriarchy that a lot of us have grown up in, the way our modern world has been designed by men, there has been something not having respect for feminine energy. So even young men, they'll try to push away the aspect of their feminine energy so much so that they'll be hyper-masculine. Or as soon as they graduate high school, they'll join the army. Or they're going to be on a football team. And if they don't play sports, they'll be big sports fans. All pushing into that masculine energy. Also, there's so many beautiful things like our feminine energy is too. It's like our intuition, our creativity. And we're a balance of both. And we can do this beautiful dance between the two. But unfortunately, for so long, when men would tap into their feminine energy, other people would view that as weak or you a sissy or shame people. And that's really unfortunate. When I talk about polarity, if you think of a battery having a positive and negative charge, one side is going to be masculine, not to say that it's one's positive or negative, but let's say one side of the battery is masculine energy, the other side of the battery is feminine energy. If you don't have the opposite of the energies, there won't be a spark there for that battery to have energy. Same thing in your relationships. And it doesn't matter if it's same sex or opposite sex relationship. If you're both resting at the same energies, you're both in your masculine or both in your feminine, you won't have that spark. After you've been cohabitating for a while or being married for a while, you'll notice that you're both resting in the same energetic. Whenever you're doing that, you feel more like roommates and lovers. And it happens so often. So knowing how to play that dance and even during a lovemaking session, who wants to be more in the masculine energy? Who's going to be more in the feminine energy? When you get really good at it, can you do a dance and take turns with it and be in this amazing flow? Now, creating safety is different for women. I imagine for them that the positive pole, positive area for them is their heart and the negative pole of energy, like a battery, is their sex organs. For men, it's the opposite. The positive pole is your sex organ, which is your deck. The negative pole is a heart space. That's why women want romance. When I was operating in my masculine energy, I approached sex like a dukes. Like a wild thing, Samantha, from Sex in the City, that was totally me. But that was not me being in my feminine energy. For men, if they want a lot of validation with their dick, that's why men usually send a pick or whatever, because you really want that to be loved and accepted and desired by your partner. And then that makes you feel this extra confidence. Whereas women, they want the heart. That's why they want the romance first. They want you to open the heart center where the heart chakra is. This is where their positive pull is. And this opens, then the legs open. And actually, the safer a woman feels, the more the G-spot orgasms will flow. A woman needs to feel really safe because they need to surrender. And if a woman has had a past of having a traumatic childhood or a traumatic experience, what we can do, and men can do this as well, you can constantly be hypervigilant and scanning for safety, even if you're not aware you're doing it. If you've had childhood trauma, over 95% of people receive inadequate parenting. If you've had some type of trauma, your subconscious can be tracking for safety, even when you're not aware of it. And if we're constantly scanning for safety, orgasms don't live there. We can't constantly be scanning for safety and be surrendering and receiving orgasm. Those things can't happen in the same space. So a woman needs to fully trust you 
feel really safe with you, she can surrender and fully receive, then she'll have the best orgasms. For men, again, they're positive poles and the sex organs and the penis. And then when they start to feel really loved and appreciated there and connected there, then the energy can come up to a heart space and then their hearts can open more. That's how that can be different. I'm going to give you an amazing tip right now. If you can, I want you to just get your hands together, put them together and rub it back and forth really fast. Now I want you to rub them really slow. Real slow. Notice how much more sensation you can feel whenever you slow down. Your brain is your largest sex organ. When you're going so fast, it's too fast. The brain can't even process all that movement. So men, if you're doing the jackhammer move that you've seen in videos, you're doing a lot of effort and exerting yourselves. But for the woman, we're not even feeling as much sensation when you're doing that. It's feeling numb down. So changing it up, slowing down. And then notice too, if you do this and you're rubbing your hands slowly and then take nice, slow, deep breaths and close your eyes and just feel into it, you can start to feel even more sensation as you're breathing into it. I was sharing earlier, porn is miseducating you and breathing slowly and deeply is a game changer. Doing PC squeezes like kegels, you know, I heard them for women. The pelvic floor is a hammock of muscles and it goes from your pubic bone to your coccyx and your tailbone. It's this hammock of muscles and it supports your bladder and your intestines as well. So PC squeezes, women will do this after having children and to strengthen the pelvic floor. Something that men can do too, it increases your blood flow to your pelvic floor. It strengthens your erection. And the way you locate where the PC muscle is, whenever you're urinating, You'll just stop the flow of urine. Let a little bit of urine come out and then just squeeze your muscles to stop that flow. Whenever you stop the flow of the urine, you've located the PC muscle. And then relax. Just as important as fully contracting that muscle is fully relaxing it. Because we know a lot of people that are way too tight in their asshole area and they're way up tight, like they got something shoved up their ass and they need to relax. So you want to be able to have that flexibility. You want to have strength but also flexibility. Like you would do bicep curls, right? It's also important to do your stretching and it's also important to work your triceps. So it's important to have the strength and have that flexibility. So doing a round of PC squeezes, they're really great to do. If you're going to the gym, you can do them between reps whenever you're resting. You can do it at a traffic light when commercials come on. You only want to do it whenever you're urinating to initially make that brain-body connection to where they're located. You don't want to be doing it always when you're urinating because if you do that, you can cause a back flow within the urine. It could lead to a urinary tract infection. Not likely, but it is a risk. So do it as you're out and about and start to strengthen that pelvic floor and you'll see how it's going to really improve things in the bedroom. It will build up your arousal as well and strengthen your erections. Do at least three sets a day, doing 30 each, and then you can build up to doing 50 each, three sets of 50. You can do them throughout the day. The more you do them, the stronger it will be and it will help use your older. You hear things like depend the urinary incontinence as people age. This will help you to avoid that as well. Here you can see where it says the pubic bone, that little hammock of muscles is right there in the diagram to the coccyx. So that's your pelvic floor. So it's really important to keep those nice and strong. Meditation is really great. So you're able to calm your nervous system down. Doing a breath of fire, some breath work can also help increase your magnetism. I have a video on my YouTube. If you learn how to not constantly leak your sexual energy, and I don't believe in no fab or you should be super celibate for a long time. Pleasure is medicine. If anyone deserves to enjoy your body, it's you. You just don't want to be ejaculating several times during the day because it's going to impact your life force energy and your vitality. You're leaking that and it's lowering your magnetism. So whenever you're able to not ejaculate as often, you increase that magnetism and then you can focus it in and be more magnetic, attract better lovers by just not always leaking your sexual energy all the time. Notice how tired you are when you ejaculate frequently, how you want to go to sleep. It really will diminish your energy. A lot of people aren't aware of that. If you ejaculate on a full moon, you notice you'll be more tired than usual. I recommend clients not to ejaculate on a full moon because you'll feel double the effect of this energetic hangover after doing that. Being an unforgettable lover that women crave is we really crave you being present. Meditative practices help you with that. 
slowing things down and that activity that I showed you to slow things down, breathing deeply and guiding them to breathe deep too, because we're mirror one another. So if you're breathing deeply, that's going to invite them. And you can even whisper there and say, oh, breathe deep and doing things because women can be so self-conscious about their bodies as well. Just understanding that and helping them to feel safety when they feel safe and they feel like you're not judging them. They can really be themselves in front of you and they can let go. They'll also be able to be more orgasmic. Slowing things down, strengthening your pelvic floor, increasing the blood flow and being your own best lover and really getting to know your body and to stop trying to be so performative and repeat what you're seeing on porn and really connect with your body and connect with your lover and talk about what would they like to do? What are they curious about when exploring with them or doing pleasure mapping and doing other things with them? You can spend the next few years learning how all this works and you can be able to have that mastery, but you might get frustrated and give up. Or I can guide you and teach you all these practices If you really want to dive deeper and help you overcome any challenges you experience as you learn that highest level of peak performance and self-mastery. If you feel like one-to-one coaching, you can request a complimentary discovery call and see if we're fit to work together. 